Welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of Carving the Divine TV. My name is Yujiro Seki. I'm a director, writer, and the producer of the documentary Carving the Divine. Carving the Divine is about the Buddhist sculptors of Japan, and I'm ready to present it for the first time in the world. But before I do so, I thought it would be a great idea to introduce basic concept of Buddhism and the history of Buddhism, so that when you guys finally watch my documentary, you guys can watch it at the maximum value. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce our scholar, and uh, he is freaking intelligent guy, and I'm very excited to have him in my show, in our show. Uh, his name is Frederick Hewitt. Welcome. Welcome, Frederick. Yes, thank you so much, Yuji, and hello, world. I am very excited to be back on another program of Carving the Divine TV. Awesome, awesome. Frederick, so I know you are coordinator at Japanese Friendship Garden, but also I heard people uh, calling you cultural ambassador. So what is a cultural ambassador? So tell us a little bit about uh, uh, your uh, description about cult cultural ambassador. Yeah, certainly. Uh, cultural ambassador, it refers to my deep interest in all things diplomacy. And um, it, it describes pretty much my, my manner of living. Um, I've held many, many different jobs and volunteer roles uh, in nonprofit, government, and um, private industry. But all of them, they're, they're focused on one way or another, uh, the exchange of cultures. Um, and um, that includes the embassy in Tokyo. The, um, I've done athletics, cross-border cycling with Mexico. I've uh, also uh, served on the boards of different um, Japan-related nonprofit organizations. And currently, I work as the uh, program coordinator for uh, cultural educational programs at the Japanese Friendship Garden. So, uh, I've, so that's an informal term uh, that people can refer towards my life mission. And I'm very honored to be a guest again on your program tonight and discuss Buddhism. Awesome, awesome. I love that. I would love to have, you know, hear what a cultural ambassador has to say today. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, uh, the new topic. We talk about the uh, uh, different kind of uh, Japanese Buddhism, uh, including Shingon and Tendai. So uh, I think it's uh, about the time uh, this uh, Buddhism was kind of, you know, it was small Buddhism, but, you know, uh, people talk about it all the time, but I don't know anything about it. So I want you to explain this Buddhism. Uh, the name is Shugendo. So, what is Shugendo? So, uh, we don't know anything about it, and why is it important? Yes, uh, I'm happy to answer that, Yuji. Uh, Shugendo, that um, it loosely translates to the way of arduous practice, and it's a unique strain of Buddhism that's an offshoot of um, of, well, it's basically an amalgamation of many kinds of uh, religious uh, thinking. Uh, the roots go back before Tendai and Shingon, uh, back to the period of the six schools of Nanto. Um, they, they, they take Buddhist faith, they combine that with Taoism, with shamanism and animism. Um, it, it, they base themselves later off of uh, Tendai and Shingon temples but they're pretty much a free thinking kind of people. Um, the practitioners are called Shugenja, so people that practice Shugen. Um, another term is also Yamabushi, which are the people who lie in the mountains. And that refers to one of the main uh, features of their practice, which is extended periods of dwelling in the mountains. Uh, the, peer, uh, the purpose being to uh, distance themselves from worldly affairs of uh, modern civilization. And uh, their practice, they would spend um, every day hiking dozens and dozens of kilometers. Uh, they would meditate under freezing waterfalls. They would perform all sorts of mudras, uh, spells, song, dance, all sorts of esoteric rituals uh, that they did adopt from Shingon and, and um, from their animistic practices. So, um, 
they they rejected um, adhering to a, a structured religious organization, uh, such as most of the main schools of Buddhism during that time period. So they they live as small groups. Uh, they're their clothes, they, they wear baggy pants with tunics, they, they tend to grow long beards, uh, they have their walking cane, at least that's the, the common image that's conjured up by popular imagination. And uh, they, they, they find enlightenment by drawing upon the energy of nature. So they, they spend months and months in the mountains um, seeking enlightenment and they still draw a lot of fascination by Japanese and foreigners to this day. Wow. You know what? I think you answered completely. So I don't really have any follow up questions today. So, but you know, I, you know, there are times when I was uh, making carving the divine, uh, Yamabushi showed up and uh, oh, wow. you know, honestly, I didn't know what they are, but now I know what they are uh, because of you. Thank you, Frederick. Thank you. Thank you, Yuji. I'm, uh, I'm excited to um, talk more next time. Awesome, awesome. So if you guys think this information is useful, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram and like me on my Facebook. And of course, uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel because that's how we do it in the 21st century. So thank okay. you, Frederick, again. Thank you, Yuji. Talk to you next time. See you next time.